the spotlight on Africa, trade, economy, development, and security. I actually will kind of give it over to our Honorable Minister of Information from Sierra Leone. First of all, welcome to our panel and uh, uh, to our discussion. As you know, we are discussing Africa and uh, our ability, both with the challenges there is to be overcoming uh, to reach our goals, and also lots of recommendations. And we look at the statistics whenever we talk about development in African countries, the figures that bring us down are those which have to do with their performance in the rural areas. So we look at a basic thing like the mobile phone, the cell phone, and the utilization of such an equipment for the purpose of developing our people. Um, you spoke about, uh, we are talking about infant mortality, maternal mortality. Uh, we are talking about agriculture in the rural areas. How do we use this modern technology to make sure that we beef up performance in the rural sector? For us, it is a very important component of our policy formulation to develop the people. The African person must be developed. But of course, the policies must be there. And again, the, the partnership must also be there. To us, it's very important. I'll stop so far. If there are questions, I'll respond to them. For me, gender equality is very, very important. We need to give a bigger role to women. A woman will think about not only herself, but about the children, a neighbor child, about a country. And women, what is happening all over the region of Great Lakes is a humanitarian um, scandal. And I think as long it's happening, Africa cannot grow in a Sorry, it's very emotional to talk about my country. Cannot um, grow in a very good, uh, good way. Issue of management, how we've been managing ourselves, how we've been mismanaging ourselves. A continent, somehow, that has not been able to do well for itself, we must be ready to take the blame ourselves. And that is what is going on continuously. People talk about exploitation. If you are vulnerable, if you allow people, you will be exploited. But if you manage yourself very well, chances are nobody else will come outside. So I don't want to just continue to talk about it, that Africa is there, the resources are there, people are out there to take it and continue. No, it's more than that. It's a continent that produced the Mobutos of Congo. It's a continent that produced Said Bari. It's a continent that produced Abacha, who six, took $6 billion of his own people and wasted it. It's a continent that produced Samuel Doe, that caused the problems of Liberia, Sierra Leone, and so on. It's a continent that is managing or continuing with a person called Mugabe, who took a country that was working so well, less than two decades, reduce it to a level where it is today. This is the issue. Failure, terrible, terrible failure of leadership that brought us to the level where we are today. Some of us disagree with it, and we feel that unless something is done about it, Nothing else will work. I know that the Global Fund has been challenged for many of the countries. And the challenge was really management and knowledge in terms of how to build your national health plans. At the same time, that really empowered the countries to have their own plans. I wish we had more Global Funds for agriculture, which is happening slowly, more General Fund for health, that would empower the countries to actually own their plans. The management is key in anything we do. And that's why business is usually sustainable, because if it's mismanaged, the bottom line is not there. It doesn't survive. The governments are being chosen for a limited period of time and not necessarily for their management efforts or management skills. But one of the reasons, one of the many reasons, and of course, each country has its own explanations, histories, trends, inertias, is the end of the Cold War. And if we go to, uh, let's say, Dumbisi Moyo's work on where did the aid go, a lot of the aid that went to Africa, as most of you at this table, if not all of you in this room understand, went to Cold War objectives, not necessarily to the benefit of the people in these countries. And if there's a question, where did the money go? It went to supporting leaders who weren't exactly on the other side, or at least convinced us of that fact. 
And also the aid that it poured into Africa, for example, in 2008 pretty much disappeared with the increase in the oil price. So not only is it an issue of where the aid goes, but how much aid is being given. These countries, a number of the sub-Saharan countries, were already struggling with many problems. And then 2008, 2009 challenged them more than ever before. Food, fuel, and financial crisis, the demographic pressure they face, Population is projected to be about 1.4 billion by 2030, 1.9 billion by 2050. And then you have climate change on top of that. Africa is already leaving climate change. So you're talking about vulnerability. If you, if you extrapolate that and consider failed states, you realize that the world cannot afford to say we ignore them for a while and we take care of ourselves. Meanwhile, he, he mentioned something. There's a scramble for African resources. There is a plundering of Africa, let's face it. It, it. it is not by wars, but it's by economic divisions, particularly for energy security. If you put it in that context, then it means that we cannot afford as a global community to say we fix things here first and deal with Africa later. So and I think that that, that is a, a really key issue as to how to develop relationships with businessmen in different African countries to a point where you'd be happy to be partners. And uh, in, in many uh, places, uh, the local uh, partner has to be 51% or more. So these are not casual partnerships. These are things that require a lot of trust, a lot of, uh, a lot of thought, and certainly can't be done uh, in a rush. They've got to be done very uh, carefully. Uh, in our case, uh, we've started to develop a, a network of television stations. We, we operate a private broadcast, television broadcast company in South Africa, and our, our hope is with time to develop this as a network across the entirety of Africa. It needs local content, it needs local partners in each place, but it certainly is the one continent that hasn't yet developed a significant regional media voice. I really believe that uh, we need to invest in the African woman, not just our monies. I think we need to invest our visions, our political clout, and our leadership so that the African woman can uh, best negotiate at peace dialogues in times of problem, and so that they are able to get early warning signs and do something about it before violence erupts. Uh, and so that the healing processes after all this uh, violence uh, can actually succeed in bringing the people together. Uh, so I'm very interested in the growth of Wikipedia, for example, in the languages of Africa. Um, and this is an area um, where, uh, well, Africa is, I guess, as, as it is in many areas, it's quite far behind. Um, but it's coming along. Um, I, I just uh, looked up here um, a few of the languages just to give a, a bit of a report on how we're doing there. So in, in Swahili, we have uh, 14,000 entries. Uh, in Yoruba, we have 5,700 entries. Uh, in Hausa, which I looked up uh, for Nuhu here, we have only 132, uh, so not very much. Uh, I, I, I told him he has to go home and tell some people to get busy. Um, and in uh, Creo, we have uh, basically, uh, you might as well say nothing. Uh, we have 21 entries, and it's actually, uh, some people have set up an experimental project to work on you know, making sure it all works, and then we'll transfer it. So it's not even fully opened yet. So um, th there's a lot of work to do um, in this. But when we think about ICT in general in Africa, and we hear uh, you know, uh, Michael Landau talking about uh, mobile, um, and when we, when we think about how do we empower women, how do we educate people about health, how do we give people the tools they need uh, in, you know, in order to begin the process of improvement, I, I do think ICT is going to be very important. So the, the, so the first thing is to be able to give people a, a real bank account. And so that, that we accomplish using the identification, using our identification tool, and the systems will come in suitcases or fixed stations, etc. Challenge number two became how do we give people money now? 
you know, people, it's a cash economy we're dealing with, so how do they get cash? So we created kind of a, multiple distribution channels, so we've got ATM machines that we've deployed, and our ATM machines, we've got them working on GPRS, so they can work anywhere in the country, and in addition to that, we've created some very clever technology called uh, swing technology, which allows computer programs to be compressed, so that now the only data that actually gets transmitted when you're in fact uh, doing a bank transaction, it's not all those multiple pages, it's just your name, your address, your, your name, your bank account, your dollar amount. So we compress it so you can even use a cell phone to be able to distribute the data. And then the, the, the primary sources of what we use are uh, point of sale machines, which we've had programmed to be able to become basically like a bank, you swipe your card, etc., and using a mobile phone. So you can do, so we've integrated all of those opportunities. You can use a mobile phone, you can pay your bills, you can, you can get your balances, you can, get, you can transfer money, you can buy airtime. You can, you know, so you, effectively, what we, can what we take for granted at night, you can do here. A lot of challenges to becoming, but that we can actually continue believing that Africa actually can continue as a hassle last 10 years had a 5% growth average throughout the countries uh, and we had to realize that that is an, actually a potential opportunity for investment even though we know there is a difficulties we should see it as an opportunity for the growth next 20 years Africa will be the diamond of the world which will be going kind to of deliver what we see Asia is today so with that I think uh, I want to close the panel I want to thank all of the panelists particularly to the minister to be here with us and to all of you for your contributions and I want to thank the foundation particularly for hosting us and, uh, and creating this opportunity for us to advocate for continued development in Africa. So thank you.